hate hay fever. Hello all, Micromunch here, welcome to another episode of my FM19 Aston Villa save. Yes, as you can tell, not very well, either not very well or full of hay fever. Either way, not feeling great, but our form has been putting me in a good mood. But quickly, I'm just checking out the dynamics on the team. And you can tell actually that I'm being supported really well uh, with all the players in here. There are some players in here who I would expect to actually support me that don't like Miguel, Navarro, Goretzka uh, and Rudiger because I play them all the time. So I'm a little bit surprised that they don't support me. But at the end of the day, it doesn't seem to be putting us off the rails. So as you can tell, since last time we met, form has been excellent. We won nine games in a row in the Premier League. Last game, when we were going to try and go for ten in a row, uh, we actually drew with Southampton. But in the meantime, we dispatched of Norwich, Derby, Wolves, Arsenal away at the Emirates, which is massively impressive. Crystal Palace at home, and then, like I said, we drew 1-1 with Southampton. We were one there thanks to Robert Navarro goal, uh, but unfortunately they equalised in the 85th minute. So I'm wondering if there's a little bit of downturn in form coming around the corner. We will find out today in games away at uh, Tottenham and at Cardiff. In terms of what that means in the league, then, you can tell here we are actually still in the hunt for a Champions League place. And at the moment, we are actually there. Uh, we do play Spurs today, and they are on equal points with us. But with two games in hand, so beating them today really puts the pressure on them to make sure that they win that game in hand. So we are going with our 4-2-3-1 today in the game against Tottenham. And it is the usual lineup at the moment, which seems to be doing no wrong. Uh, Kalanich and Goal, Reg Willem, Rudiger, Mai and James Bree are at the back. Then you've got John McGinn and Goretzka in the middle of the park with Memphis Depay now starting out on the left with Robert Navarro and Gaitan in behind on the right. And then you've got Jack Lancaster obviously leading the line up front. In hot form so far, 21 goals a season, 15 in the Premier League like we said. And he's playing a very high average rating. Uh, as is Ross McCrory, who's now got two goals in his appearances that he's made. It's been a slow start to the season, but now I feel that we're finally ticking into gear. We're beginning to look like a top six club now. So looking at the Tottenham lineup, they've got a pretty decent team here with Kane still leading the line up front. Under's a good player. Bruno Fernandes obviously is a world class player. Fabian Burge. You've got some good players here. Who's this boy? Oh my word. Czech 18 year old Thomas Mate Mateka. Fickle, but one the kid. Oh my god, he looks absolutely sensational. This is the kind of player I'd love to get into my team. Want to look for in the transfer window? We shall see. I probably won't have the money. Right, I'm going to passionately say to the boys, uh, we've been on a good run there lately, so go out and impress me. He hasn't really done anything for the boys, but the old faith talk will bring him round. It always does. There we go. Set our opposition instructions. They're in really, really good form, as you can tell. They're Harry Kane. I want to check how many goals he's got this season. He's got eight in the Europa League and seven appearances, which is impressive. And he's only got seven in the Premier League, so a little bit off of it in comparison. Only two assists as well. Not like him to not be very um, prolific. Right, away we go at the new White Hart Lane or the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, whatever it's called these days. Um, it is a miraculous stadium, actually. It looks incredible. It's just a shame the Tottenham play there. Safe to say, actually, that the season isn't really planning out how I thought it would. At one stage, I really thought we were going to struggle to make the top six. Now, it looks like we're pretty much there. As you can tell, there's a massive drop-off between the top six here and Swansea. It's worth noting that Arsenal are down in 13th position, so maybe it's not a surprise that we beat them. But either way, like now that we're in the top four conversation, which I didn't expect this year, we've really got something to aim for, and I can start preparing for European football because it looks like we pretty much guaranteed it. As John McGinn steps over a free kick, whips in Rudiger, heads it, good save by Ruli, nice take. Is this going to lead to a chance? I think it might do here as Matejo on the ball. I want to see him in action, see how good he actually is up against Jack Lancaster today. It'll be interesting. It's a nice ball out from him there to Chalov. And Chalov there running at the defence. Slips into Harry Kane. Oh, what a save by Kalinic. An insanely good save by Kalinic. I genuinely thought that was it. I thought that was in. What a save. Chalov to Burge. Burge out to Under. Come on, boys. Get out there and get to him. Under. Great ball to Bruno Fernandes. He drives inside. Whips it to the back post. Under. Great tackle there by Regulon. Don't foul him. Ah, oh, I said don't foul him. Apparently, it looked like a good tackle. Oh, no. It was Depay. Depay fouled him instead. Oh, Memphis. Oh, here we go. It's the only way Harry Kane ever flipping scores with a penalty. Penalty. <gasps> Kalinic saves it. What a save. Yes. The Harry Kane drought continues. What a save that was by Lovra Kalinic. He is a penalty master. McGinn over a free kick. Whips it in. My at the back post. Heads it off the post. Really? He's dropped it. Oh, yes. It's the scrappiest goal you will ever see. But Antonio Rudiger has bundled it over the line. And Spurs miss a golden opportunity at one end to score. We go up the other end. And from a set piece, we take the lead. What a goal. Well, not really. It's a terrible goal. Really makes an absolute hash of that. And Rudiger, that is terrific diving in there. I think it was going over the line anyway from Guy Tan, but Rudiger just had to make sure a poacher's finish. 
1-0 away from home against Spurs, and this really puts the pressure on them now. I really like what we're building here now. I think that finally some of my new signings have settled in, and now we just look a bit more like a proper unit as Memphis Depay hits it straight into the wall from the free kick, and he's given the ball away. Not having his best game, Depay, at the moment. As Under now runs at John McGinn. Don't foul him, John. Don't foul him, John. He's doing well there, John. Just to show him why. That's a brilliant ball to the back post. Shalov is there. I think it's offside. It looked offside to me. And it has. It's been cancelled out. I have a keen eye. It should have been a linesman. We'll see it here. Yeah, he's absolutely miles offside. It's not even close. Half time and it's 1-0. And we've actually been the better team, you can tell. In terms of highlights, probably not. But we've actually been the much better team. And I'm going to say passionately, the boys. I'm very happy with the way it's going to keep up. Navarro's not having his best game playing at 6.5. He's been on absolute fire recently. So I'm going to tell him I'm not happy with his performance. First out of the second half here, and Spurs have got it in the right end position at the back as Hakimi chips a nice ball forward to Kane. He's all on his own at the moment. We've got no one with him, but that's a superb ball out to Under. Breeze missed it. Under. Oh, he's hit it just what? Oh, no. Kane saved it. A brilliant save then because it looked like it was going top bins, and he's just managed to flick it wide. Great save. Players who are not having a good game is uh, Robert Navarro, and I'm actually going to take him off now. We're going to bring on Miguel and sit him back into the defensive midfielder position. And I think to also be safe, I'm going to take off John McGinn and bring on Ross McCrory. So we've got a bit more of a nice defensive unit in that midfield. Navarro's not had a lot to do today, to be fair. He's not really contributed a lot. Uh, and fortunately now, we've got such good depth on that bench that I feel we can take these kind of players off. As De Silva gets on the ball here, plays it into Fabian. Fabian, great ball out there to Hakimi. We've been caught out a little bit on the wing. Hakimi whips it in. Harry Kane hits the bar. Great, great header away there by Rudiger. We're clinging on a little bit here. And I don't really want to take Jack off, but I'm wondering if maybe the pace of play there will give them something else to think about up front. Memphis hasn't had the best game. He's given away a penalty, given the ball away numerous times, and he's still playing at 6.8. It's just quite baffling, to be fair. And now he's got himself a yellow card. But with only two minutes left, I've added on time. I think we... Um, 30 seconds to go. Spurs clear it in. Fabian, don't give away a foul. Jesus, I thought Goretzka had fouled him there. I think we're going to get away with a win. I think we are away at Tottenham. It's a massive win if we get it. It is! 1-0. Big, big result. Harry Kane missing a penalty just makes me even happier. They dominated the game in the end here in terms of shots and everything like that. But ultimately, we held firm. That was a brilliant, brilliant win. Well done, boys. And that really does put the cat amongst the pigeons. I've also noticed that we've actually got my first England uh, squad call up. So we'll get to see that as well. And that'll probably be the next episode. But obviously that's going to be done as a sort of like separate series. I've decided now. So very exciting. Okay, viewers. So I have selected my national squad. But we'll get on to the reveal of everything in that in the next episode. Because I want to treat it as a separate thing. So today we have a game against Cardiff City. We're currently still in fourth in the Premier League. It's been a very positive week or so in terms of beating Tottenham. They did win one of their games in hand. So they are now on 58 points. We need to keep the pressure on and win again and keep this top four race alive. Cardiff are struggling down in 18th position. So I do expect us to take care of business today. Uh, Reguilon picked up a little bit of a knock over the week. But Josh Earl, who is his natural replacement, isn't 100% fit. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get him in the reserves and get him trained up. Because Christensen can fill in. But for the time being, I'm going to keep the same lineup that started in the previous game. Uh, why change a winning formula at the end of the day? So away we go, as you were. Let's hope for another three points. I think it's the fact that we've turned away our away form that suddenly turned us into like real top four contenders. At the start of the season, our away form was absolutely abysmal. We had no defence. We were just so poor. But we've just kept at it. And eventually the guys have bonded. And we've turned into a really good side now. As Robert Navarro hits a worldie. Oh my god. What a goal. It is a length goal of the season. He's our highest rated average rating player. That makes no sense. But you get what I'm saying. And that is why. Unbelievable. I've let him off the leash. And the free roam roll on that number 10 roll. And my god is he making up for it at the moment. Lovely play by him and Memphis. And that is just an absolute worldy. What a goal. Poor Cardiff can't catch a break there. That is an insane finish from our number 10. Wonderful stuff. Reguilon into Memphis. The lock happening down this left-hand side as Memphis sprays it out to James Bree. Bree tries to take it inside the box, but uh, tackled by Robocco. And now Gien... Gienpo, I think his name is, gets away. Oh, good take there. There's a couple of men free in the box. Have sour. Ah! Who is Bauer? Scores for Cardiff. We got caught a little bit on the counter there. Not great defending, not great marking. Everyone got sucked into the ball. 1-1. Mm, 
great run here by Jennifer, you have to say. It was a brilliant little layoff, and yeah, it's not great there from Lucas Ma. He just gets caught ball watching, and Kalinic can't set himself as Hosbauer takes it early. Good finish, 1-1. One, one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the boys to pass it a bit shorter and take them off being more expressive. Let's just try and keep the ball for a bit. As John McGinn whips in a corner, Kosniaki heads it away. Memphis, out to John McGinn. Back to Lucas Mai here. Mai. McGinn's got a bit of room. Finds Robert Navarro. Navarro, bang! It's his second goal of the game. A great finish on his left foot. 2-1 to the Villa. And my God, this boy is unbelievable. He's so good. Memphis to Pai to John there. Lovely first time football. We just keep moving Cardiff around. John throws his one in. Lovely touch by Navarro. And somehow he's got it in from there. I have no idea how he found that angle. But it's a great finish. Keeper probably could have done a bit better. I don't care. It's 2-1. Come on! He was poor in the last game. I told him I wasn't particularly happy with him. And he has bounced back no end. As John McGinn over another corner whips it in. Good take by Smithies there. Are Cardiff going to catch us on the counter yet again? Bree into John. McGinn to find Robert Navarro. Makes his way into the Cardiff half and lays it off to Memphis. Memphis now on the ball, running at the defence. Patterson, uh, the pie ran straight into him. Not great from Memphis. He's having another game where he's given the ball away a bit too much for my liking. Mai into Gaitan. Gaitan to McGinn. We're recycling the ball nicely here as Memphis bends one. Oof! Just wide. He has scored for the club and it was a good goal. It'd be great if he could get a second today. Good take there by Regulon, but it's one to Husbauer and he's given us a few issues today. Good tackle there by Navarro. Great tracking back. Dispossesses Husbauer. And now Memphis. Great ball down the line. Jack. 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 Oh, what a save by Alex Smithies. He tips it wide. The angle was tight. And if Jack had got it in from there, impressive. But you do back him. So 2-1 at the break. And it's been absolutely brilliant if you're a Villa fan. But we just need to get a third. I think if we can get a third. That'll put the game to bed. I'm going to tell the boys I'm very happy with the way they play. Gaitan needs to do a bit more. So I'm going to say calmly to him. I'm not happy with your performance so far. He looks delighted. That's not really what I was hoping for, mate. The pie back to McGinn. It's good patient play from us here. Oh, I thought Regulon was in around the back there. Goretzka to Gaitan. Gaitan hits it. Good save by Smithies. Memphis ticks it in on the rebound. Ticks it in? <laughs> What's that? Uh, but it's the second goal of the season. Second goal for Villa. Bang. 3-1. And you'd like to think that that is probably it done and dusted. Good patient play from us here. Goretzka. Lovely lay off to Gaitan. Gets out of his feet. It's a great save by Smithies, actually, because Guyton absolutely leathered that, but he palms it into no man's land. And Memphis is on hand to run in and tuck it away. We are in some run of form. Time's ticking away, and it looks like it's going to be a standard 3 1 victory. Very, very easy going for us, actually, today. A little bit of a scare when it went to 1 1, but Cardiff have offered little or nothing, as you can tell in terms of the match stats. It's been a very good counter attacking performance. We've not had just as much of the ball, but at the same time, when we have had it, we've done a lot more with it. Apparently, Robert Navarro has delivered an all-conquering display, according to the commentator, and it sounds like it as well. He's been very good today, and this has made me very, very happy. I've enjoyed this episode today. This has been good. Actually, just playing on the game recently has been fun, because I'm just winning all the time, and I quite enjoy that. There you go. A 3-1 away win at the Carter City Stadium. We are in the top four hunts. There is no getting around it. We are miles away from winning the title because United are head and shoulders above anyone in the league. As you can tell, they're 12 points out of us and they have a game in hand. But, 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 top four is not out of the equation. We have to just keep winning, keep doing our thing. We've got a couple more of the top four rivals to play as well before the end of the season. So those could be really big games. In terms of where we come back with Villa then, uh, I think actually what we might do is we might have the... I think it might have to be the Everton and City games, actually, because the Everton and City games are going to be round about that top four rival spot, to be fair, especially with City. They're definitely a top four rival of ours. Uh, and then, obviously, we'll have the season finale. But the next episode that you'll probably see on the channel will be the England one, where I take my first games in charge of the English national team in our European Championship qualifiers. So they are actually games that matter. Thank God. Thank you so much for watching the episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then please do like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you come back for the next episode. Hopefully I'll be a little less snotty and over this hay fever or cold or whatever it is that I've got. But until I see you then, stay cool.